Welcome to Choose My Own Adventure. Today, I'm going to be starting with session zero. We're going to be figuring out what exactly we're doing in our solo adventure. And we're going to figure out who the protagonist of our adventure is. This is a solo RPG. It's named similar to some of the things you might be familiar with, such as uh, Me, Myself, and Die. Uh, this Mythic GM emulator is a very powerful tool and coupled with a few extra tools uh, you have the opportunity to play something between Dungeons and Dragons and those old choose your own adventure books that were so popular in the 80s and 90s. Let's go ahead and kind of explain how this tool works. There's a fate chart. You get to ask it questions. When you're stuck, you can ask questions to the fate chart. Depending on the chaos rank, you have a chance percentage dice. So out of 100, what is the likelihood something is to happen? And you also get to frame it. So there's always a good frame. So if you're thinking that what's the likelihood that someone could fly, you might be like, well, that's impossible. But um, at a basic rank, that's still 5%. So it, it leaves some room for, you know, you won't consult the chart if you really truly think it's impossible. Um, but we will be consulting this quite often. In addition to that, we have a few more things worth noting. Down here in the event focus table, this is a means of figuring out what the next scene is going to look like and we will be making good use of that next point there are after the event focus there are two key features the event action and event meaning or sorry they're both event meaning one is action one is subject you pair these together you should get some semblance of what the game with the next scene, uh, whatever you're trying to frame, these two paired together help you frame it. If you couple them with uh, the event focus table, then you really have a strong understanding of how the event works. All right, so now let's dive into a little bit more about the game. We're gonna start with framing an event because we're going to start in an event. So we're going to test the event focus table. Eighty-eight is NPC negative. So if we go down, I believe these are listed here. Let me see. Okay, there we go. Something bad or good happens to the player character or non-player character, whichever is indicated on the event. If there is more than one player character or NPC, then randomly determine who the subject is. The event meaning will help determine what happens, although logical ideas should should be the primary focus so we have something bad happening to an npc perhaps someone in need event meaning let's go down and figure out what the event meaning is by, the, by rolling against the action and subject 19 and 52. Waste. Dispute. Action waste. Dispute. Hmm. How do we interpret that? Okay, so something bad happened to an NPC. There was a dispute. And the action that took place at 
this event or the action taking place is waste. Let me think about other synonyms of waste. Squander, misspend, misuse, throw away, throw away. misuse. Hmm. I could go either way. I think this is a, an important one because it, it really is about how we're starting the game. But I'll um, limit myself to two more minutes to figure this out. My first initial instinct was a dispute with something more formal, like um, an upcoming duel or some sort of trial. And waste could then be seen as to throw away or to misuse, sort of throw away a trial that should be trialed. And it's at the NPC negative. So waste dispute. Yeah. I think someone's not getting a fair trial. So that's what we're gonna pick up on. But we're gonna we're going to lead with character creation. Mm. Random race. Let's figure out who our character is. Don't like that, it's got too much. It's something basic. We're going to go ahead and roll, because I don't like an autofill. A white dragonborn in Turneroth. Okay. I can do that. So dragonborn. Turneroth, the white dragon. All right, we have a name and a race. I think all we need to figure out really is a background and a class. I'm going to look in Xanathar's guide. I think we're going to consult this to see what the background is like. So starting with origins, we're going to go with parents. Oh, this should be at 1D100. So 1D100, 34. You know who your parents are or what. Okay, so that answers some questions right there. Now birthplace. For birthplace, you rolled 33. Home. So their homeland. Number of siblings. This has the potential to have a lot of siblings. I don't think the dragonborn are going to be that high. So I'm going to limit myself to a minus six on this. So minus six, a uh, minimum of zero. Oh, wait, <laughs> I did that completely wrong. It should have been a 1d10 minus six. Okay, so zero siblings. 
birth order. That is irrelevant. Let's find out more about the family. Family. Adopted family. Same or different race? So, I think I'm going to roll for both. If I have an adoptive family, that assumes that they're both missing. Your parents died, both of them. Parents died. And lifestyle. 3d6. Twelve. Modest lifestyle. So it says for absent parent, your parent died roll on the cause of death. Supplemental table, so we just haven't gotten there yet. Find out what happens. Childhood home. Mansion. That doesn't sound like modest. This is where I am confused by some of these. I think we're going well. Mm, okay. So I'm interpreting this as this is his family's mansion, so perhaps he was wealthy and he was taken away from it by the adoptive family after his parents' death. We're not going to do a charisma modifier. Well, we will. We're going to lock into a charisma plus two. I don't know what, he, what this person is. Probably a paladin, let's be honest. I always found it easy to make friends, and I've loved being around people. I think noble, given his background. Mm, I'm going to change that one from randomly rolled. I come from an old and storied family and it fell to me to preserve that. I mean, that already wrote itself, right? Preserve the family name. Both parents dead. It just makes sense. Life events. He's going to be young. Let's see. 21. Uh, we'll say 20 because I just want one life event. What? 95. You committed a crime or were wrongly accused of doing so. Oh, interesting. We're on the crime table to determine the nature, so this might this might actually lead right into the game. So I'm rolling on what? On the crime table. What was I wrongly accused of? Theft.
then we're gonna find the cause of death table. <clears throat> Cause of death right there. Accident related to class or occupation. That begs the question what they are beyond nobles. And perhaps that is it. Perhaps they're politicians. We'll ask that soon. I don't think we need to go any further. Okay. So. I think we've taken them as far as we need to. I think now we can just begin character creation. So I th here's what I'm picking up. We were wrongly accused of a theft. And in the NPC negative waste dispute. So it's definitely to do with a trial. And I think in this case, it's a demand for a trial by combat. I think that's interesting. Despite this character being a dragonborn, I think they're not in their homeland right now. So there's a bit of outsider, let's say misgivings or racism going on. We'll find out more about that NPC. So right into probably a death scenario at first. <laughs> so let's create a character using the character Mancer. Race. Dragonborn. I think they will be awful good. White Dragon Ancestry. Class is Paladin. Starting proficiencies. Sound like they were friendly, so let's go with Persuasion. And I think it's going to be insight from that time as a hermit <laughs> um, under. So I think that might be like the, the religious monastery that took him in. That would explain the past. It was like he was moved away from vengeance that he probably wanted after his parents were killed. So it's probably political in nature his family's death. We'll leave that off the table for now. And we're going to do this old school. Um, I'm just going to do 3D6 and we're going to do it um, for each one. So let me get to reroll ones. We're going to go seven, so seven 3d6s throughout the worst one, and you can reroll ones. Okay. So 10's a keeper. Well, sorry, 17 is for sure a keeper. Okay. 13 is for sure a keeper. Oh. Um, 18's a keeper. How did I miss that? Throwing out the seven, well, 
we get to reroll those two ones on seven. So 2d6 plus five replaces seven. So we're at 18, 17, and 17. 13. This is a solo campaign, so I could go with like the 10, or I could re-roll the 9 and see what it gets. Um, that would make him not very bad at anything. Because it's a solo campaign, I'm willing to do that. Normally I like some flaws of the character, but they'll have flaws in their own right. They're, they're going to be a paladin, so... Yes. Eight. <laughs> okay, there we go. Nice and easy. So 13 and 10. So I'm normally high, that might be my best D&D roll ever. Um, let's not put this to waste, Charisma. Seventeen. Seventeen. Then from there, it's... Ten, thirteen, ten. Thirteen, ten, ten. Thirteen, ten, and ten. Background, gotta go custom here, and we're gonna add the noble background. Custom, noble. Proficiencies will be skill, history, skill, would be skill persuasion. We chose persuasion already. I think we're going to go ahead and pick up religion. Custom background feature. Another proficiency, tech, and this will be um, tool proficiency. Has to be a gaming sim. Dice seems appropriate. And then language, one language of our choice. I think in the mountains there were dwarves. Um, white dragon habitation. Let's just see what. Yeah, so colder in northern mountains. And then I 
position privilege. So basically, this is thanks to the noble birth. Um, yeah, so people tend to to look after, you know, to think of you positively. Um, not positively. They try to accommodate you. Like their hospitality is great because of your nobility. Personality trait. Let's roll some of these out. Let's make an actual character here. So, um, one D eight for personality trait. And what do we roll for? It takes great pain to always look my best and follow the latest fashions. He tries to keep up. He's a bit vain. And then do that one more time, maybe. Two. The common folk love me for my kindness and generosity. That fits. 1d6. For ideal to responsibility. It's my duty to respect the authority of those above me, just as those below me must respect mine. Yeah, so I think this is where he sees it as a waste because I think he realizes he's likely to win this battle. And he sees it as a waste that this fight has to take place at all. Um, bond to. My house's alliance with another noble family must be sustained at all costs. Okay. And then flaw. Five. In fact, the world does revolve around me. Hmm. I don't think that's interesting for him. I think he's past that. I'm gonna consult. Hmm. I'm just gonna pick. I think I'm starting to see a character here. Um, Maybe the world does revolve around me. Maybe that is the best fit. I don't like any of those. I think they're not super interesting. Like they're good for a D and D party, I guess. But maybe we can go with that. All right. So he's a beefy boy. Let's go with class equipment. Hmm. I think it's interesting to do the longboard and longsword and shield. Seems most classically appropriate for a nobleman. Dagger. Priest pack makes sense. I 
Okay, no feet. And we said 20. I'm not too worried here. We're going to go 6 to 200 pounds. And we'll leave the rest. Right? He is a white dragon, so it's not Caucasian skin. It's white, white. Dragonborn. Apply changes. Okay. So we have a character. I think it's time to begin. So let's find out about this NPC. So we have... Um, we did name the Dragonborn. I forget the name we came up with. Or, or rolled, rather. Let's see what that is. That is... Tuneroth. Turn her off, and then let's find out. Let's see a bit more about this NPC. <clears throat> so this NPC is NPC modifier. This is the one he's in trouble with. Eighteen. Cunning. Beggar. Cunning beggar. Interesting. And I'd say... Things are pretty standard, so let's go ahead and consult and see what the NPC power level is. Eight. Slightly weaker. And their motivations? I've got some thoughts here, but... Motivation, noun, and verb, noun, and verb. Hinder religion. Okay. I think that's enough for them. Um, see what race they are. I'll go with the original, just to stick true to what I said. Um, the original was a red dragon board. I think it was Kumush Kumu. So I think this might look like um, an old conflict between the white dragonborn and the red dragonborn in this setting. An age-old war, and there's a great bit of race in between the two. This Kumushkumul saw me, um, saw our, turn, our protagonist, Turnerath, saw Turnerath for what he was, a paladin, and is currently trying to use the court system against uh, me. 
uh, he's trying to shame me and the only way the, there's easy ways out of this this theory um basically the easy way out would be admitting the easy way out would have been admitting a lie and that's not something turner off would do it, it would be disgraceful to them um something around being found at the at the brothel i think and so turner off is is disgusted by this um he denies it and what what's happening now is this is leading to a conflict between Turneroth and Kumushkumul. Um, so I think they arrive on the day of the conflict and now we get to pull up the mythic GM emulator and start rolling. But before we do that, I think we're going to go ahead and end this session. This is session zero. I'm going to take a five minute break and then I'm going to restart with session one. Thanks for watching. I think that was a pretty good setup. Uh, I think you got a taste of how the Mythic GM emulator and UNE, which were showcased so brilliantly by Trevor Duvall, um, are capable, with Xanathars too, are capable of giving you a really great starting spot for a solo RPG if you want to D and D some, some solo RPG action. Thanks for watching. I'm Bob. I've got uh, Pendragon Stream Weekly. Love subscriptions. Um, please follow me here. Subscribe. Um, it's always welcome. Uh, we also have a Discord. You're welcome to come join me and my friends and hang out and learn more about the games that we run. Pendragon's my only weekly, uh, but we have a lot of other projects on the go. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back soon. Take care.